Hey everyone and welcome to New Egg TV. My name is Paul. Today we have a very special guest here in the studio. This is Jacob from EVGA. How are you doing, Jacob? Good. Fantastic. Thank you for coming by today. Uh, we have, of course, some new X99 motherboards from EVGA. If you guys aren't already, already familiar with X99, you can check out our YouTube channel because we're going to have lots of content there. So we're going to have a, a more dedicated explanation of the CPUs that are available from Intel at launch. Of course, there's three SKUs that are out there. This video is going to focus on the EVGA X99 motherboards. There are three motherboards that are available at launch, and we'll have uh, links to all these, of course, down in this video's description. So we have the X99 FTW for the win. Mm -hmm. That's right there. That's kind of the... It, it has everything you would need yep. uh, from a standard uh, ATX form factor. And then we also have the classified version over there, which is the flagship, top of the line. Right. And then also to give you guys a little bit more flexibility when it comes to form factor, over here on my left, we have an X99 Micro, Micro ATX version. So uh, very excited and should be uh, plenty out there for you guys to choose from. But let's start from a little bit more of a theoretical perspective, uh, perspective here, Jacob. Um, first off, we want to point out that this is an enthusiast platform from Intel, right? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the, the people who this platform is geared towards, or it's made for, is really going to be more, more so towards the content creationists, uh, as, as I've been calling them, people who are doing stuff like video editing or really higher-end workstation type activities, because this is a very powerful platform, uh, and it is a little bit more expensive, say, than the Intel mainstream platform, uh, Z97, that's available right now, which, of course, EVGA also has motherboards for. But since EVGA is known as a gaming uh, company, uh, PC gaming in particular, um, would you recommend this platform and these EVGA motherboards for yeah, gaming systems? Yeah, definitely. It's still, uh, even though it's obviously optimized for content creation, there's eight processing cores, there are 16 threads. Uh, from a gaming perspective, it's still the highest end platform that you can build for mm -hmm. a gaming PC. So uh, if you are looking for the ultimate in a gaming PC, then X99 is without a doubt the platform for that. Yeah. So if you want the best of the best, go for X99. If you're uh, a bit more budget conscious and you don't need the power for the content creation side of it as well, then maybe a Z97 might be Yeah, Z97 is still an excellent platform. You know, it can play um, uh, 4770K, 4790K is a, is a great CPU. It overclocks great, but uh, for uh, the many enthusiasts, uh, X99 is the latest and greatest platform. All right, so uh, there's kind of a quick intro for you guys. Now let's uh, focus a little bit more on each board. Uh, we're going to start off with the For the Win version that's right here, because again, this is kind of the the, um, the standard, so to speak, uh, for EVGA. If, uh, if you want to get in on this platform and you want a full-size system, then this is an excellent board to go with. Now, uh, it does have this little cover here over the uh, I.O. at the back. It's mm -hmm. only going to be held in place when you actually install this and bolt it down. So we wanted to show that to you guys. I'm going to set it aside for now, otherwise it might fall off. Sure. And cause a racket. <laughs> we have an exposed LGA socket here as well, so I want to be very careful of that. Um, so for the For the Win board, um, can you give us some of the highlights here, Jacob, some of the things that you guys have integrated here? Sure. So uh, off the chipset, we have 10 SATA 6G ports. Okay. Um, those are all native to the chipset. We also have six USB uh, 3.0 ports. Two of these are off a USB 3.0 header right okay. here. And actually, this header is right angled, so we make sure uh, that it doesn't interfere with any... Um, if you have graphics cards in the slots, you know, so it won't interfere with that. So for those aesthetically minded, you can angle those ports. You've done that with the, the USB 3.0 as well as the 24-pin yeah, power. So, right uh, yeah, not only that, USB 3.0, 24-pin power connector is angled. This is not so much for clearance, it's more for aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just looks cleaner in a system, especially if you have a case that has, you know, the kind of hole, cutout holes where you can hide cables. Oh, yeah. Um, but we also right angled some of the fan headers here. So, you know, the fan header here and here are both right angled, okay. even down here. Keeps. This one here is a six-pin power connector. That is a, that's actually uh, more power for the PCI Express bus. Okay. Um, it's optional, but uh, it is recommended if you're running like three-way or four-way SLI. Okay, so if you're uh, stacking video cards on the system, then plug that in. That can give you a bit of extra juice to make sure there's no yeah, voltage drop. Yeah, because the otherwise all the power for the PCI Express bus is being run through a single 24-pin mm. power connector, and so it, yeah. it helps to have a little bit more auxiliary so power. Oh, particularly help with stability. Speaking of uh, SLI configuration, since the CPUs here that are available, uh, the 5820K is going to have 28 lanes mm -hmm. for PCI Express Gen 3. The other two higher-end models, uh, 5930K and 5960X are going to have 40 lanes, so this is the platform to go for if you want multi-GPU configurations. Yeah. Since EVGA, of course, uh, does a ton of work with NVIDIA for some really high-end graphics cards, you could do two-way, three-way, or four-way configurations off of this. Yeah, and uh, the, the great thing about this platform is, unlike Z97, that's all running native off the CPU if you have the CPU with 40 lanes. Um, so there's no bridge chips needed or anything. So no, no added latency from a, a PLX chip or something like that. 
Excellent. Um, and then uh, you guys have done some, uh, I, I like the, the choices here that you've done as far as the spacing goes. So you've got uh, two slot spacing available for anyone who's doing multi-card configurations. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm guessing it would also be suitable if you're just, say, running a two-way configuration uh, to use a, th a three-slot spacing. Yeah, you can okay. use, uh, so for example, slots one and four will give you both by 16 uh, performance. Okay. and. Um, and two-way SLI with, with adequate spacing for, for cooling. Excellent. Uh, and then as far as uh, the DDR4 implementation here, since this is a quad-channel platform, you are going to want to uh, purchase a quad-channel mm -hmm. kits. Uh, so you have four match sticks to get the most bandwidth from your memory. Uh, and you guys have actually given a total of eight slots, so a maximum memory installation available there as well. Yeah. I understand you can have something like 512 terabytes theoretically, of <laughs> memory or something, obviously going to be limited by the actual uh, capacity available in the DIMMs. Um, but again, here, DDR4, not backwards compatible with yeah, DDR3. Not, yeah, it won't even fit in the slot. So, so DDR4 is the brand new memory platform uh, for desktops, you know, and uh, memory is just starting to become available. So Excellent. Uh, and then apart from that, we have a lot of the standards that you might expect from, uh, from an EVGA uh, class or, uh, for the wind board. Um, so we have uh, C supplemental CPU power is up here, of course. I like that you guys have added some uh, some higher end features that you don't always see on boards here, uh, such as surface mounted power and reset buttons. And then uh, we've also got this little guy right here. So these are, these are voltage read points? Yeah, so this is um, obviously an optional thing, but you can plug, it supports, it's supported on all of our boards. It plugs in here and you can use um, a voltmeter to measure the voltage of individual components on the board. So okay. it's definitely geared for the enthusiast users, but the enthusiast users uh, certainly appreciate that. And that uh, keeps it much cleaner, so you can just individually read uh, each of those points and you don't need to bother with soldering or uh, actually those little individual connection points on the board. So yep. nice little feature there as well. Uh, apart from power and reset, we also have surface mounted clear CMOS. Yep. And then uh, uh, I also like that you guys actually have the PCI Express lanes uh, yeah, PCI Express disable lanes. So it's it's especially helpful for people who are using water cooling. Oh yeah. Because uh, say for example you something you know one of the cards isn't working or something, it, it makes it uh, a lot easier to troubleshoot that card to try to find the root cause. Excellent. And, and if you just want to disable any of the PCI Express slots, you can do that as well. All right. And then uh, closing out our look at this board. Here's a quick look at the I.O. on the back. So again, all that USB 3.0 connectivity that you have. Again, it's native, so you're going to get really fast performance out of that. And then uh, all the other connection points that you might need, some U additional USB uh, 2.0. Is that also a uh, rear uh, CMOS? Yeah, CMOS another well? clear CMOS there. So um, you know, when it's inside your chassis, you don't have to try to fumble around with this button, you can also just hit that one. Right, so you got an external one there as well. All right, so there's a rundown of the For the Win version. We're going to do a quick swap right here so we can give you guys a closer look at the micro. Then we'll finish with the classified so we can see what the highest end users are going to have available. So uh, taking a look at the micro, I really like uh, micro, well, with, with, uh, with, with X79, I should say, um, it was really cool to see the micro boards that were available for that because you actually can fit such a powerful system in, in, a, in, a, in a fairly small form factor. So um, having micro ATX um, really allows folks to have a lot more flexibility, especially if you want something that's a little bit more portable. And uh, kudos to you guys for bringing one out right at launch here. So um, I, I think this is one of the few micro ATX X99 boards that's available. Um, but you're going to get all of the features we've kind of already uh, mm -hmm. spoken about when it comes to X99 and what's available there. CPU support, of course. Um, since we are dealing with a smaller form factor board here, um, we have four uh, DDR4 DIMM slots rather than eight, but um, that's still plenty for, for uh, anyone building a system off of this. And then uh, you guys have still managed to, to fit a lot of the same features here, um, even not just talking about what's natively supported, but we still have the voltage read points uh, connections up here. We still have a surface mounted uh, LED as well as power and reset buttons there, um, which is excellent. And I like the fact that uh, with the LED, when you actually get and boot into your operating system, the LED switches over from postcodes um, to uh, showing the CPU yep. temperature, yeah. which is really cool. Like if you got a side window, just at a glance, you can quickly see mm -hmm. um, uh, what your CPU is running at. Um, how about uh, anything else aside from that? What am I missing here, Jacob? Uh, on this board, uh, it still has SLI support, which is great. Okay. Um, Two-way SLI is what most people will probably be running on this platform. But uh, if you are creative, you could you could technically get three-way SLI to work. Um, maybe maybe with some water cooling blocks or yeah, something. Yeah, you had, have to have single. If slot. you had single slot graphics cards, but um, that would be interesting. The motherboard can support it if you can uh, manage to fit cards in there. But uh, for the majority of people, they'll be running two way SLI. Okay. Um, still have the six. On this one, we have we, we lose a couple SATA ports, but it's still six SATA six G ports, all uh, native to the chipset. 
and we still have six USB 3.0 all native to the chipset as well. Excellent. One thing also is that um, that I forgot to mention is on all our boards we use Intel Gigabit Ethernet okay. ports, which uh, a lot of people have been asking for in our community. So, and that's, a, that's an excellent feature. Intel kind of sets the standard when it comes to network connections. I, I think both their Wi-Fi chips as well as their yeah. actual uh, LAN chips uh, do a fantastic job. So that's integrated onto the back there. Um, I'm guessing you also have access to the Intel uh, software package then for uh, for controlling the for the tuning. LAN. Yes, okay. and uh, we also have our own uh, overclocking utility, which is called Elite. Okay, and um, it allows you to like uh, change CPU multipliers, change B clock change voltage, you can also read, uh, monitor the CPU temperatures and a lot of the vitals of the motherboard. Excellent, so uh, apart from uh, the uh, a few fewer DIMM slots, a couple fewer SATA ports, and uh, not quite as much PCI Express connectivity, you guys pretty much got everything uh, X99 has to offer built into the micro ATX board here. I like the uh, color scheme as well, it keeps it uh, it's a little bit more black and silver, kind of dark, dark graphite gunmetal, if you will. <laughs> Um, but uh, excellent uh, options there for color coding and color matching as well if you're building a, a nice system that you want to have on display somewhere. So excellent. That's the uh, X99 Micro from EVGA. We're going to set this one aside now too and we'll switch over to the Classified. Now the X99 Classified, this is, so this is the flagship. This is the, the best of the best, at least as far as right now, for what EVGA has to offer with X99. Right. And um, this is still, this is, is this uh, EATX? Yeah, it's EATX. Okay. And um, actually, I should actually, they both check. are EATX. They're both EATX. Mm -hmm. So bear that in mind. EATX is just a bit wider than standard ATX. And it, actually, it's not true EATX. Okay. True EATX comes out a little bit farther. Yeah. Uh, but it is a little bit wider than ATX, so we we do call it EATX. So it can't quite fit into that ATX standard. But even even yeah. a lot of standard ATX cases, and this will obviously be case by case basis. But um, yeah, with most, just that bit of extra width, it's, you it's very still be rare able to, to find an, an ATX case that cannot accommodate the this size. Okay, so a little, little bit wider there, but apart from that, uh, what other special sauce have you guys uh, dropped into the, the flagship uh, model? So for the, classified, um, for the classified board, we increased the power phases to 10 power phases. Okay. Uh, we have dual 8-pin uh, power inputs for the CPU. So that gives you a little bit more juice for uh, your, your CPU, up to 600 watts if you needed it, which uh, you know, you wouldn't probably need it unless you're doing some crazy, crazy overclocking. So you're, you're gearing these features a little bit more towards uh, this is people more, using exotic cooling. This is cooling. more for the exotic cooling, okay. water cooling, even water cooling, but uh, even water cooling, you know, 600 watts may be a little bit overkill, yeah. but... Uh, so for folks who are going for the uh, the world record overclocks and that sort of thing, you need extra power, uh, and that's an excellent way to maintain stability. Right, yeah, okay. and um, this board actually has Creative Core 3D audio. Okay. So um, we use the Creative Core 3D chip. It gives you all the great Core 3D that's features. The, that's and the quad, uh, the quad, quad core, core one, yep. right? yeah. Nice. And of course it comes with a Creative uh, driver suite as well. Uh, we have two M.2 ports on this board. Okay. So there's actually one here. And there's Generally another one, the and another one right there. So I, I really like that. Um, actually, pretty much every board that I've seen so far only has one M.2, and I'm, I'm a really big storage fan, especially next generation stuff that's really high speed. Um, so it's great to see a couple options there. So you have, uh, this is a 2280, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, so uh, 22 is the width of the M.2 slot, and then 80 is the length of that. Um, so make, make sure you get a 2280. And then over here we have, a, this is an E-keyed uh, 220. 30? 2230. All right, so um, just make sure you get the M.2 drive that corresponds with that if you're going to want to be populating one or both of those or one or the other. Uh, and then apart from that, um, we're going to have a lot of the same connectivity again that we saw with the For the Win version, so all the USB 3.0, uh, all the serial ATA located over here, of course, mm -hmm. um, all that good stuff that you're going to get. Just the, the amount of peripherals that you can connect to an X99 system compared to um, what we've seen in the past is really yeah, quite insane. Yeah, and all running native off the chipset. All, all native, and then you're not going to run into to conflict issues there. You're not going to have, oh, we have too much stuff going through the the uh, the, the chipset right now, and one is going to suffer some speed yeah. uh, consequences or something like that. On this board, we also have uh, three, we call triple BIOS, three BIOSes. Okay. So they are, you can switch between them with this small little switch right here. All right. And uh, they are three completely separate BIOSes. So, so it's not just like a failover, it's actually, yeah, you can it's, jump between... Yeah, there is actually three BIOS chips on here. Nice. One, two, three. So All right. there are three completely separate BIOSes. So you can use it for like staring, uh, saving different overclock profiles on each one, or uh, maybe you want to run different BIOS versions on each mm -hmm. one for some reason, or maybe you had a BIOS flash gone wrong, hopefully not. Um, but uh, nice, but, nice you can, but it, it allows you to switch to the other BIOS okay. and easily recover 
uh, recover the BIOS. Excellent. And then, uh, of course, we still got the surface mounted uh, debug LED and uh, surface mounted power reset buttons, all that good stuff up here in the top right as well. Voltage uh, read points are relocated up here to the top, but they're still existing there, of course. Couldn't, ha couldn't go without those on the top of the line board. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the color scheme again, a little bit more subdued I'd say than the further one version. Got a little bit of red there on the EVGA logo on the, on the heat sink, but other than that, mostly a black aesthetic. Um, so, so very nice. Uh, any, other, any other final words about the, uh, the classified board here, Jacob? Um, one thing about uh, that really covers all the boards is um, our, uh, our BIOS. So, the BIOS, of course. So we, um, a few years ago with the Z87, we introduced a new GUI BIOS, and mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time on this BIOS, maybe over a year easily, um, optimizing it, making it look nice, but not just look nice, but also be very functional. So it has things like, uh, if you, of course, mouse support if you mm -hmm. want to use a mouse, but you don't have to use a mouse. You can use a keyboard. And it works just like a, a, um, a traditional BIOS with a keyboard, but okay. it gives you a lot more useful information uh, we call the heads-up display at the top. There's uh, a lot of information about what's going on in the motherboard, what your CPU frequency is, B clock, what your memory is running at, voltages, all that kind of stuff. So um, that is on all the motherboards. And uh, for X99, we have uh, kind of refined it mm -hmm. uh, from our Z97, added a couple more features that people have been requesting. So. And uh, this being an enthusiast platform and all of the CPUs that are available here being unlocked, I imagine the, uh, the UEFI BIOS is going to be a place where a lot of enthusiasts are going to hang out for quite some time. Yeah, so. X99 is a fun platform to overclock. It's, it overclocks pretty easily, um, you know, especially... Uh, when you consider that you're overclocking six or eight cores yeah, as well. Yeah, it overclocks nice, and it's, it's really simple to do. So. Excellent. So we're very excited about this platform, and uh, of course excited about these new motherboards from EVGA as well. Of course, again, links in, available down in the video description. While you're down there, leave us a comment. Let us know what's your favorite board here. Are you, look, are you more of a, a pragmatist? You like the For the Win? Or you want top of the line classified? Are you looking for something that's a little bit more portable, uh, like, like the X99 Micro? Um, I think all those are excellent solutions. And Jacob, thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you. Sharing thank all you this very information. Much. Don't forget to th hit the uh, thumbs up button as well, guys. Let us know that you like this video and uh, us providing all this information because we hope it's helped you out in your uh, decision making when it comes to X99. We'll see you all very soon.